welcome. This log is going to talk about a 1955 Buick Special that I acquired. It's in Cherokee Red. Uh, so quick history is that in 1955, Buick made four trim levels, the Roadmaster, the Super, the Riviera, and the bottom of the line Special, which is what I have. I found it interesting that the trim levels weren't just minor uh, chrome changes or things like that. The each body style was completely unique and they didn't share panels with either any of the other cars. Uh, so they made about 700,000 of these cars in 1955 and about 50,000 of those were the two-door sedan specials like mine which is by far and away the most popular. Originally the car came with a 264 cubic inch V8 and automatic transmission. When I acquired it the car had not ran in 40 years but thankfully it was stored inside and was almost rust free. I chose to build this car because it had space for my wife, my kids and myself uh, and plenty of luggage for the planned cross country road trips we were going to be doing. It, the plan is to be pulling a boat, a camper, something like that and go on long journeys so I needed something that was spacious and dependable. I knew that I wanted a modern fuel injected engine that was dependable and would start and run no matter the temperature or uh, conditions outside. I stumbled into a late model 5.7 Hemi with a 545 RFE transmission. Uh, for engine control, I chose the Holley HP EFI because of the plug and play harness it came with, the preloaded sensor calibrations and the self-learning tuning. The harness itself is for the early Hemi, uh, which mine is, uh, which has the waste spark uh, ignition and a few other minor sensor changes. I topped off the Hemi with an Edelbrock throttle body that has an idle air controller and throttle position sensor that are plug and play with the Holley engine controller. I had to abandon the 545 RFE transmission after searching for a transmission controller that would be compatible with it and not finding any real good options. I ended up buying an adapter from Wellcap, uh, which is the company out of the US has a great uh, gentleman that I worked with through that company and it allowed me to mate up the 5.7 Hemi with a G late model GM transmission. I had a 4L 80E available and assembled it onto the Hemi and put it down into the car on some custom mounts. It fit without needing to cut up the firewall or change anything up front of the motor so overall it was a pretty good fit. I also rewired the car front to back with the painless wiring universal harness. Uh, an interesting thing I did with the wiring was that I mounted a terminal block or a bus block in the front uh, under the dash and also in the back in the trunk area. This allowed me to run a single larger wire uh, to this bus through a relay which was triggered by the ignition. So ignition on energized this bus and that bus could then power the compressor, the stereo, the amps, the fuel pump, etc. And it was so much easier and cleaner than running independent wires from the battery or uh, somewhere up in the front of the car all the way to the back. I knew I wanted a decent stereo, so I started with a double din head unit, which I mounted in the stock speaker uh, assembly. So stock the stock assembly worked with a radio and a speaker that was mounted together in uh, kind of a self-contained box and that mounted up underneath the dash. I disassembled it and removed the stock speaker and mounted my doubled in head unit in that space. Uh, the reason I picked this location is that there's a grill, the stock grill that sits in front of it. I modified that with a piano hinge so it can swing up and down and uh, when it's put back up in position you can't even tell that there's anything other than stock. I have an amp powering the four speakers. Uh, there's two six inch rounds and two six by nines. A second amp for the 10 inch sub and a third amp powering a 15 inch sub. All in it's just around 1500 watts RMS which should be more than enough for what I'm looking for. I replaced the stock differential with uh, one that I purchased on Kijiji. I followed up with a guy who had an ad for one out of an F-150 with had disc brakes and everything that I would need. I drove the just over an hour one way to go meet this guy, 
passed him the cash and he asked if I could stay inside my vehicle because of the pandemic going on. He said he'll grab it with a forklift and drop it in the back. Uh, so he opened my end gate, put the pallet with the differential on it in the back and uh, closed the end gate and off I drove. So I drove the full hour home and looked in the back and found that this was not a Ford <laughs> F-150 differential that I paid for. The guy, of course, uh, knew what he was doing and immediately stopped answering my calls and emails. So I tried to figure out how to make this new differential work. Uh, by sheer luck, it was the right width and it also had disc brakes and had a four link bars mounted to it ready to go. So I mounted it up and set to work on the air ride, which I'll cover in a full separate video. So overall, the car is mostly stock in terms of body. I don't plan on changing anything there. The frame has been modified to change the rear differential, but otherwise is mostly stock. And the interior uh, dash, everything else like that is gonna remain stock as well. So I'm gonna be going over all the future changes of the car in, in their each individual videos, but this, this was intended to help get everybody up to speed on the history of the car and uh, what my goal for it is in the end, which is drive across country with my family, pulling a trailer. So the goal is to be driving it this summer of 2021. Let's see how it plays out. 